All right. One of the questions that I've looked at today is the following. <clears throat> See what we have in stipulations. We're given the random variable X represents the losses. Usually this is a loss amount. Okay, if you get in a car accident or your house burns down, you lose something. Usually the value is money, dollars, right? So this is the loss amount. Um, <clears throat> how much you lose basically um, can be thought of as a probability. So what I mean is, for instance here, I have a probability distribution function, the PDF, sorry, the density function, and this is telling me basically the probability of me losing a certain amount. The amounts I can possibly lose are zero to 10, okay? A realistic um, circumstance is probably like in thousands, so I can lose maybe at most $10,000, right? And this gives me the probability of me losing that much money. So that makes sense. Uh, in this case, I have a deductible of four, and um, this is usually formally called an ordinary deductible. Uh, it's not too complicated, really. Basically, it just means that as the policyholder, if I have a loss that's less than four, I pay for all of it. So damn it, that sucks. Otherwise, if my loss exceeds four, but is less than 10, the insurance company will pay the excess. Okay, so that's what this four is represented by. <clears throat> now, I have a new random variable, and I call it uh, y to the p. So this is all given in the question, right? Everything I have is given in the question. y to the p is the claim payment per payment. So this is the important part that I personally can screw up. Easy to screw this up. If you're given this particular random variable, be very careful about your interpretation of this. Okay? And I want to find the expected value of the claim payment per payment. So it sounds confusing, uh, but it's not. Actually, it'll, it'll, hopefully we can make uh, shed light on this and it'll make sense. Uh, first thing I want to do is just write down something regarding the insurance payment, just the insurance payment. So I'm actually going to uh, <laughs> give another random variable. I'm gonna call this XP, okay, X sub P. This is just the insurance payment. So in other words, if I'm the insurance company, how much am I going to pay? And when am I going to make a payment, okay? So the insurance payment, we need to actually write down the values that this random variable can be. Okay, so what values can X sub P be? Well, if you think about this for a second, hopefully this will make sense. I mentioned this a moment ago, the insurance payment is gonna be zero. If I'm the insurance company, I pay nothing. If what? I pay nothing if, if what? If whatever the loss is, the loss could be zero in which case I pay nothing, or the loss, if it's all the way up to four, I pay nothing. If you crash your car and you have a loss between zero and four, the insurance company pays nothing because the deductible is four. So you pay all of it out of pocket. Sucks. Otherwise, I'm going to pay whatever the loss is minus what you pay, which is the deductible. If I'm the insurance company, I'm going to pay the loss minus the deductible. If the loss exceeds the deductible, but is less than the maximum loss, which is 10. The maximum loss is 10, so the loss is not uh, greater than 10, so th this is the situation here. This is the insurance payment here. Now the trap I was referring to, which I frequently fall into, is just finding the expected value of the insurance payment. Just finding the expected insurance payment. In other words, when I say expected insurance payment, I mean the average insurance payment. It's not exactly what I want though. I want the insurance payment per payment. We want to think of this as, this is really saying, what is the claim payment or insurance payment given that I make a payment? Given that I make a payment. So this is where it gets, you have to be very careful with the wording there. So we're after uh, this notation, right? We're after the expected value, the expected, uh, the expected claim payment uh, per payment, okay? And we want to think of this as the expected what? Okay, I need to write this in terms of the loss. In terms of the loss random variable. So if I'm the insurance company, what am I going to pay? I'm going to pay X minus four. 
Let's say that I make a payment. I'm paying the loss minus the deductible. I'm paying the loss minus the deductible given, okay, and this is where the per payment comes into play. So assuming I'm gonna make a payment, I'm gonna pay the loss minus the deductible, but when do I actually make a payment? I make a payment when the loss does what? When the loss exceeds the deductible, given that the loss exceeds the deductible. That's what this notation means. Now I just need to use the definition of this conditional expectation, it's not too bad. We have to compute an integral and we're done. So what is the definition of this? I'll write this out uh, carefully first, I guess. So this is equal to, I need to, the way I think about this, I need to integrate over some x's. Okay, some x's, I'll just put x for now. Okay, what's gonna go in the integrand here? I need to put x minus four. Okay, and now I need the, the PDF, the conditional PDF. So what I need here is, uh, the notation I use is f sub x minus four, given x is greater than four, and with respect to x. So this looks complicated, looks crazy. It's really not too crazy, <coughs> especially uh, this part right here. So what is this part right here? Uh, this is the conditional PDF. So let's write down what that actually is. Uh, what this actually is, um, just the easy thing to remember here, if I'm conditioning on the same random variable, which is x, then my numerator is just gonna be the PDF. It's just the original PDF, which is f of x. The original PDF, which is what is given, 0.02x. So I'll just write it like this, divided by, down below I see the probability that the loss, x, minus, x is greater than four. So this is the probability that x is greater than four. Okay, so what's gonna happen here, and I'm gonna stick this in right here. This is gonna go right inside here, right? So obviously I need more room, not a big deal. Let's make some more room. Okay, we have the logical steps down, which is really the important part. The rest is just getting the math correct. Okay, so what I need to do here is, uh, well, I'm just gonna write this all as one, okay? When I look at this piece down here, probably x is greater than four, this is sort of an integral itself. I mean, this is, I mean, not sort of, but exactly an integral itself. So what we're going to get, and hopefully you can convince yourself this is true, is the following. So the expected, the expected insure, uh, claim payment, which uh, is going to be x minus four, given that I make a claim payment, and that's only if the loss exceeds four, is equal to the integral okay, of x minus four times the PDF, the loss PDF, which is 0.02x dx, divided by, okay, and this is the part um, that I'm skipping just maybe like two steps, but if you've done sort of thing, you know what's going on. I'm putting the probability x is greater than four underneath. This itself is an integral. So this is four to 10 of 0.02x dx. Okay, last thing we need is we need the bounds integration on here. And if you think about it for a second, I'm um, looking at this conditional PDF, x has to be greater than four. So again, four to 10. And wouldn't it be nice if I could cancel the four to 10s, the integrals? Unfortunately, we cannot, just due to properties of integration. That sucks. My life would be easier if I could, but I can't. So we have to roll with it. So let's see what we have. Uh, from here on out, I mean, this is basically just calc one business, just a straightforward integral. There is one nice thing I can do. The nice thing I can do right here is I can pull the point two out, factor out the point two and just get rid of it. Okay, so in fact, I mean, let's just do it this way. The 0.02 is gone, the 0.02 is gone. So that's quite nice. And now what I have uh, is the following. So this is now equal to, this is equal to now four to 10. Distribute the x, so this is x squared minus four x dx divided by four to 10. 4 to 10 of x dx. So pretty straightforward, okay? Maybe I'll write a couple more steps. Not really interested in this sort of thing. This is just basic, honestly. So this is just 1 third x cubed minus 2x squared going from 4 to 10. 
divided by, integrate this, increase the power, divide by two. So this is one half x squared uh, going from four to 10. Okay, fundamental theorem of calculus, plug in the endpoints. And I think you can take from here, what you should get here is approximately uh, 3.4286. And I'm just gonna put a dollar amount here to think about this, what it, what it actually would mean. What we're trying to say here is that if I make a payment, I'm the insurance company, I make a payment. If I make a payment, what would the average payment be? $3.43. So given that I make a payment, given that the loss exceeds the deduct deductible, how much am I actually gonna pay as an insurance company? I'm gonna pay $3.43. Now in a real life example, I guess, as I mentioned before, it's probably like thousands. So I'm expected to pay $3,000. All right, questions, comment below. Thank you for viewing and stay tuned for next time.